Hi, here's Energy TV from Stuttgart. Now with Ilka Mai from LockLab, part of Hexagon. And of course, you know Ilka because since about 10 years, she's here, uh, our guest in Energy TV, always talking about the latest um, versions of digital twins de developments, BIM, and so on. Ilka, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. <laughs> I'm delighted to be back here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, on Wednesday, um, you will give us a talk here at Intergeo, um, of course, about your topic, digital twins. And uh, what do you think are the biggest misconceptions or even still unrealistic expectations people have in this field? Well, Denise, do you mean uh, other than understanding what we're actually talking about? Do you remember, you said it 10 years ago, yeah. we had a conversation about BIM yeah. and about... You tried common, to explain it to me and I know, brought and some about examples the common understanding you. of what BIM is and what it is not. Mm -hmm. And now we seem to have exactly the same conversation. What is a digital twin? What is it not? Mm -hmm. So this is where it starts. Um, but other than that, um, you talked about the misconceptions or maybe about the hurdles of yeah. adoption. Because obviously, yes, there is a huge potential. and. The market and the people seem to understand the potential mm -hmm. and there are a couple of things that are holding us back and um, from my experience it is with every new technology it was BIM 10 years mm -hmm. ago and now with digital twins some people seem to think that they can cut corners mm -hmm. but if you haven't done your homework when it comes to data management data security if you have not introduced proper processes in your organization don't expect the digital twin to come and solve your problem overnight. That's not going to happen. And that is sometimes a bit of a misconception. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't need to do the hard work mm -hmm. and it will just solve my problem do instantly. Your homework, do your basics. Yeah, you still need <laughs> to do a few things. You get them right. Yeah. And then you add the digital twin on top of that and it will fly, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what's new from LockLab? right now part of Hexagon and Hexagon so this year, especially when it comes to digital twins in your field? Well, we are enormously proud that we're now presenting our uh, digital twin platform, a cloud-based platform. It is part of the HXDR suite, the Hexagon Digital Reality Suite. And uh, our front end, call it, of, of HXDR is a proper digital twin platform where clients can upload data or they can we can host the digital twin and we enable connectivity and integration, which is the, the, the whole concept of the digital twin, that you interact and you influence the physical world through your digital world. You're able to analyze, to simulate. And what we find is that a lot of people still seem to struggle with that concept of interacting with the physical world through the digital world. Mm -hmm. And this is why we brought a little demonstrator project. So if you're here later on, please come and see us at our booth uh, in Hall 1 at the Hexagon booth, and uh, you can have a play, and everyone else here at Intergeo, please come and see okay. it, and you will really, you can see, you can feel it, what it means to interact with the physical world. Um, this is a big challenge when we talk about digital twins, and what specific hurdles do you see, and how could unified standards push, really, the industry forward? The, the standard thing, as it was with BIM 10 years ago, is a bit like a chicken and egg situation. Because normally a standard follows best procedure. People do things in a similar way, always the same, and then you make it the standard. However, sometimes you need the standard in order to show people how to do things. And if you haven't got a standard, like it starts with the definition, the common understanding, what is a digital twin? Is a GIS a digital twin? Yes or no? Is a point cloud a digital twin? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. who, who can answer that question without a definition? And in our world, definitions per se come from the standard committees. In Germany, we have DIN, and then we have at the uh, in our European level, we have SEN. And this is where a lot of people are working at the moment on a framework of standards for digital twins in the built environment. Mm -hmm. And I'm a member of some of these committees, and we are trying to come up with a common definition and also a common understanding of what really the digital twin should enable, should be able to do, so that when we talk about, yes, we create digital twins, we all know what this is mm -hmm. and what it is not. And also the digital twin, you need the definitions in order to specify a certain scope of work. For example, if you want to procure a service from the market, 
but also to compare prices. Mm -hmm. And this is another thing we see with the lack of standards. We cannot really compare offerings and we cannot compare prices. And the market is just about to develop and to establish, um, but it will need a bit more time to get fully developed. Mm. Yeah, guys, I'm not a professional in this field, so I'm just a journalist, but for me sometimes it's difficult to understand the difference between BIM and digital twins because sometimes I talk about BIM and sometimes we only talk about digital twins and sometimes it seems to be completely similar to me. So can you um, just mention the key difference between these two technologies yeah. or is it just the same? I See, I like the concept that was introduced by Professor Michael Greaves and uh, he suggested that as long as the digital model exists before the physical assets, so in design, we call that BIM. It's a BIM model, oh, okay. and that's the prototype. Mm -hmm. It gets designed first and then built. Okay. And if we do it the other way around, if the physical asset exists before and we create an instance of the physical one, we, create, we call that a digital twin instance. Mm -hmm. So both could be called digital twin, one digital twin prototype, the other one digital twin instance. Super logic, isn't it? Absolutely. However, Denise, what's more important is what do they have in common? The virtual <laughs> thing, the 3D yeah. thing. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> that, that's where it starts already. Does a digital twin need to be a 3D model? Does it need to have geometry? Not, not no. At all, no, no, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It could a digital twin could exist of a process, for example. Okay. Yeah. So it, but it needs structured data, and this is the same as BIM. See, when we came from CAD and even 3D CAD to BIM, one of the big jumps was that we came from a concept of layers and lines drawn on a layer to an object. All of a sudden, we were dealing with objects. Mm -hmm. And with an object, you can start connecting data, you can do all sorts of things with objects. And this is the similarity to a digital instance mm -hmm. where you have a model or a process or whatever, but also you have a structure in the data. And that is where a lot of people are now calling point clouds a digital twin. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think, well, if you now, also with the knowledge of what we're now developing in the standard committees, obviously, if the digital twin needs to enable analysis, simulation, data connectivity, and all these clever things, you need to have some sort of structure in your data so that you can do all that. And the point cloud, per se, does not provide that structure. It needs processing before it can do that. Okay. So you can use that logic as a bit of a checklist when you talk about digital twins does it have a data structure and a BIM model and a digital twin instance that both have that underlying data structure? Mm -hmm. Thank you for the explanation. Now I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard, is it? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, let's talk about um, the solutions you provide or you're developing. Um, how do they really help businesses maximize their potential in using digital twins to, um, for tackling challenges? The whole digital twin thing is still pretty complex. And this is why we are aiming for just three things. The first one is simplicity. Mm -hmm. Things need to be simple for the user. Leave the complexity behind the scenes. Give people something they can immediately and intuitively work with. It needs to be simple. And this is why we love the 3D geometry in the digital twin, because you see where things are. And that's so logic. You don't need to understand or know the technical plays of an object. You just Navigate there, click on it, retrieve the data. Super mm -hmm. simple. So, and the second is um, the integration. So what we provide with our cloud is not designed to replace other systems. We're not saying to clients, oh, you need to switch this off yeah. and you've invested millions of euros, we don't care, just buy ours. No, 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 it's the opposite. Our cloud is like the glue yeah. between the different silos that the clients have anyway. And it just sits there as an integrator of data and you can, one after the other, you can start connecting more information mm -hmm. silos or systems mm -hmm. through the digital twin. Mm -hmm. So the second is that integration. And the third one is automation. Mm -hmm. And that's where we use AI, obviously. And that will bring the prices down and enable a wider adoption. Mm -hmm. And this is fascinating now because with the new generation of AI, all of a sudden, I can speak to a computer in my own language. I can ask yeah. it to do something. I don't need to know Python or C Sharp anymore. I can just say to the computer, please create a 3D model. I want 10 buildings in it. I want the road. 
and I want uh, some drainage covers, and it will do it for me. Mm -hmm. Just by describing it's it, talking so to it. It's so much faster. It is, it's amazing. And then if it doesn't get it right the first time, I can say, oh, that was a nice try, but please make these buildings uh, to look like they were from the 70s. Yeah. And it will do it. And it is absolutely amazing. Yeah. So automation is the, the third big one. And then um, hopefully we will see a much wider adoption. Wow, very interesting. Thank you very much for the chat and for <laughs> updating us about digital twins and uh, enjoy Intergeo. Thank you, Denise. Every year you're very welcome. It's a great pleasure to be Thank here. Thank you. Thank you.